Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to 7th round of Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Wagen Z 2020. Uh, today I'm gonna cover one of the games of 7th round and uh, as white gonna play Nikita Vityugov and he is very strong grandmaster from uh, Russia. He was actually member of the gold medal winning Russian team uh, in World Team Chess Championship. Uh, in 2009 and 2013. So he's extremely experienced player, uh, 32 years old already, and his ranking 2747 uh, gives him the 19th place in the, you know, ranking of all chess players. So very ex experienced um, uh, player, definitely strong grandmaster. And um, as black play, Jordan Van Forest and I know I cover a lot of games of this guy and uh, maybe I should uh, cover also other games but I really enjoy play style of of this young grandmaster from Netherlands um, he's 2644 so not even in top 100 players but he come to this tournament very well prepared he get from uh, the openings usually much better Sometimes he has some problems, but he choose an orthodox opening and then uh, winning most of the games. Uh, usually he did that with white, but today he play with um, black and then against much stronger opponent. So let's see what happened in the game. So Nikita open with e4. We have e6, French defense, d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, classical variation and e5 by uh, Vityugov. Uh, I think the one of the most popular um, opening, the most solid, knight f on d7. And here uh, white can play f4. This is the most popular, played many, many times. Uh, and then it's c5, knight f3, knight c6, uh, bishop e3, so strengthening this, um, this pawn. And uh, black actually can take that pawn, can play a6 or bishop on e7. And all of this continuation are, you know, played thousands of times on the top level. Kasparov, Anand, uh, Kramnik, uh, Magnus Carlsen play that as black. So uh, everything is very, very well known. Uh, but Nikita Vityugov play knight c on e2. Um, slightly less popular line, but still um, very solid one c5 c3 so creating this pawn chain um, very characteristic for the french defense and now we have knight c6 knight f3 bishop e7 a3 a3 is important move here uh, it's uh, it's helping to control the b4 uh, square but also uh, b4 can be played uh, in case of, for example, queen on a5 and also protects um, uh, queen side uh, of white. Uh, we have castle by Jordan, knight f4 and here we have interesting move and I haven't seen that before, queen a5 which is um, pretty popular in the French opening but not in this line and, and here Everything is should be fine for um, uh, for white. For example, bishop on e3, knight knight on d4, and this this pawn is pinned because um, of the queen on a5. Uh, and here, for example, knight d4, c takes on d4, b take on d4. Uh, queen can move to c7 because of this um, f um, b4 move. Uh, bishop d3 so very classical for example um, this uh, bishop is very strong usually in french defense uh, light square bishop uh, knight e5 that pawn would be uh, taken uh, but now little tactic by white for example uh, queen takes on h7 uh, king takes on h7 and queen h5 with check that's uh, just possible continuation. Uh, king g8 and now bishop takes back the 
um, the piece and uh, bishop d6 everything is is fine it looks like white uh, has uh, some attacking chances uh, but actually uh, not really because one of the light pieces is gonna be exchanged uh, white also can go for you know g7 and get some perpetual um, check here or just exchange um, bishops and um, the game would continue but white wouldn't have a strong attack however at least it would be you know equal somehow somehow i have no idea how but nikita managed to play bishop on d3 and bishop on d3 blunders the 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 pawn on d4 and uh, from so experienced player that was uh, really unexpected of course a knight take on d4 and then we have knight d4 and c takes on d4 uh, and here white have to really uh, choose what they want to play um, this line is coming so after taking uh, there is the very dangerous uh, fork uh so white have to approach that uh, correct queen h5 was played so first create some threats uh checkmate threats is of course and the best and now f5 f5 is actually the best defense in this situation for black and in this particular situation e takes on f6 and passau is uh, impossible watch what would happen uh, queen would be attacked by the knight on f6 queen e5 keeping an eye on c3 d would takes on c3 and situation here is like really really dangerous for the king there are some tactics so much safer would be just go um, you know to the corner and castle queen b6 uh, could be played bishop e3 uh, queen d6 so exchanging the the queens uh, but of course white don't need to exchange the queens uh, but still e5 knight e2 knight g4 so keeping the pressure on f2 but also uh, uh, threatening to exchange this, uh, this this bishop knight g3 knight e3 and after taking on e3 the situation is uh, much more comfortable for black 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 stays much better they have extra one pawn but the pawns are connected and this pawn uh it's easy target to attack for example uh, queen can can attack here and put the pressure on b2 and on e3 and uh, and also there is an open open file of course uh, that would be difficult also black has a um, bishop pair so uh, really difficult situation for for white this is why um, definitely uh, after f5 uh, nikita vitugov didn't want to take uh, and pass on so uh, he just castle on the king side and now we have knight on e5 so um taking this pawn and this pawn usually in french defense uh it's very very powerful and uh, annoying for for black we have c takes on d4 and black could go for this bishop but this bishop actually is not very strong piece as now f5 is you know preventing from uh, being uh, useful on this diagonal so we have knight on c6 escaping from and uh, the harm way and now we have bishop on e3 bishop on e3 of course defending d4 pawn we have bishop on f6 so keeping a pressure attacking uh, twice this pawn knight e2 defending and now we have queen queen on b6 uh, still putting more pressure and even uh, you know attacking b2 pawn uh, king on h1 so nikita vitugov decided to uh, get off the harm way because in some lines um, this bishop can come with check and then uh, make some you know double attacks and uh, give some extra chances so in this case better to have king on h1 we have bishop on d7 b4 and rook a on c8 rook a on c1 so going to the open uh, file this is the only open file so uh, of course both sides should uh, fight for it 
and now we have knight on e7. And here, of course, um, Van Forest want to exchange the rooks, and uh, Vitugov agree uh, with that, but he play rook on c5. Uh, actually, engine doesn't agree that is the uh, great move, but after rook on c5 and d takes on c5, I can tell you why. Uh, Vitugov thinks that it it's this this move makes uh, some sense. Uh, first of all, queen c6, so getting uh, off with this uh, queen, of course. And now look what happened. Yes, black, of course, has now a very powerful center, which can be pushed. Uh, but at the same time, white have attack on the on the queen side, because three pawns are definitely more than two pawns. So uh, there are some, you know, counter attack chances. We have knight on d4 attacking the queen and then queen going to a4 uh, of course these pawns have to be defended as is the only counterplay for white so if black you know start to eliminate all of these pawns that uh, the game is over so rooks go on a1 we have bishop on e8 now by uh, van forest but g6 was considered as the most solid and actually the strongest move because now the queen is kicked from here so it can go to e1 and exchange the queens but also queen e2 if the if for some reason um, Vitugov would not like to exchange the queens uh, for example f4 that would be interesting line and uh, this pawn cannot be taken because uh, because white would lose the uh, knight on d4. So um, c6, that's uh, the most active, interesting, and counterplay. Knight on c6, bishop on c2 first, attacking the queen. And after kicking the queen to a6, we would have b5. So quite fancy, but knight d4, bishop d4 bishop b5 now attacking the queen so uh, queen has the time to actually um, defend the bishop bishop d4 queen d4 okay dust settle down let's see what just happened uh, four pawns on the white side and seven pawns on the black side so black stands much much better so g6 was definitely the way to go however we have bishop on e8 and then queen on h3 so um, vitugov decide to keep the queen on h file um, because now f4 is impossible due to the, the very strong attack and now we have knight on g6 bishop c2 attacking the queen queen moving of course and uh, rook on b1 so um, vitugov uh, want to attack with these pawns and what about that pawn on a3 a pawn on a3 if it's taken then the knight can take a e6 pawn and then the massive center of black would be you know uh, collapsed so uh, bishop on f7 first protecting and now f4 uh, and here if queen takes on a3 it's it's possible uh, not not bad move uh, queen f3 for example bishop d4 bishop d4 and just exchanging the queens and black would just enjoy better um, end game with extra pawns and also uh, with these pawns um, you know they are already a mess up so uh, would be quite um, probably quite easy um, to win however queen c4 was played and it's much stronger move uh, creating some threats infiltrating the white position and here we have bishop to b3 uh, attacking the queen and queen queen moves to c3 we have rook to d1 and knight takes on f4 and that's interesting a move winning another pawn and uh, bishop on f4 and bishop on d4 um, are, are the moves and um, 
yeah, that was just um, exchanging the pieces, but with extra pawn for black. Uh, queen takes on c3, bishop takes on c3, so exchanging the queens also. And now we have bishop on d6, rook c8, and now we have b5. So uh, Nikita Vityugov start to advancing the pawns. Uh, now there are not so many um, pieces on the board, so it's easier to calculate. And uh, it's clear that he has some chances, but uh, look what happened in the game. We have bishop on b2, so harassing the a3 pawn. So a a4 was played by Vityugov, bishop a3, now attacking, it's, and it's a double attack on c5. So we have a5, and now bishop on c5. Uh, but actually, uh, it looks like it's clear win, winning the pawn, and then it's very, very easy game. Uh, but lo look what would happen, for example, on bishop on e8, which is a much stronger move b6 so because um, he's attacking the b5 pawn so b6 uh, a takes on b6 a takes on b6 and now bishop on b5 uh, and here in that in that situation is uh, really everything very easy now it can be attack and also uh, Bishop can be moved to c4 to protect from um, this threat on, you know, um, rook on c1. It can't be played now, but after the bishop is moved, then uh, rook can go on c1. Uh, but that was not played. That would be much more safe approach. Bishop on c5 first by Van Forest. But now we have rook on c1. So uh, pinning that bishop and you know uh, threatening to win that um, minor piece we have b6 and this is the very interesting moment of the game uh, and if you don't believe me check the link now i'm giving you the link uh, this is the link to interview with van forest he was like really scared that wow okay i had a very easy and winning uh, situation and here i just mess up the the, the stuff so uh, yeah so he was not not expecting all of this what's what's gonna happen here uh, but let's see what's the main idea here so the main idea and actually recommended by the engine would be rook takes on c but it's so strong or not actually b takes on c5 b6 so now you see the idea a takes on b6 a take on b6 and the idea is to create the pass pawn which i'm um, not really easy to defend against as white has a pair of bishop but the problem is rook can go to a8 and now uh, there is weakness on the first rank, so checkmate is, is, is waiting there. So h4 has to be played, or h3 or whatever move, and still rook can go on the first rank with check, king h2, and rook b1 now, b7 can be pushed of course, but in cost of bishop, and after promoting to the queen, uh, black just takes, and at the end, there are four extra pawns, so very, very easy win for black. So this was the line recommended by the engine. Clearly, for human, it doesn't work. Uh, so uh, what are the other possibilities? Uh, so we already know that there are problems on, um, on the first rank. So maybe h3, what would happen? Bishop e8 attacking this uh, dangerous pawn. Uh, and now rook on c5 let's see how now would go b takes on c5 b6 so the same a b6 a takes on b6 and now bishop on c6 could be played by white and now bishop a4 and actually this bishop can be taken uh, because black still can you know sacrifice the the rook on the last rank uh, but bishop uh, b7 would be maybe more interesting uh, as uh, bishop d7 rook d8 uh, and then it looks quite dangerous um, bishop takes on e6 uh, with check 
uh, king h8 and now bishop c5 uh, so destroying all the pawns uh, center but now d4 can be pushed and just go to the, the to the end for example bishop f5 d3 bishop g4 defending there uh, d2 still going king g1 and just uh, promoting um, exchanging the pieces and black clearly uh, they are like you know rook up so rook extra rook is um, enough to win of course so um h3 would also not help in this position so how to make complications uh, in this game g4 was played uh, not easy to understand uh, this move, but uh, I will show you the strongest continuation for uh, for Black. So if you watch already interview with Van Forest, you know that he was thinking, okay, Bishop E8, that's what I should play here. Bishop E8 was the way. So G takes on F5, Bishop takes this dangerous pawn now, uh, but now uh, A takes on B6, A takes on B6, F on e6 so uh you know these pass pawns uh, are gone but now there is another pass pawn so uh, quite um funny bishop c4 could be played and uh, black would have to probably exchange that bishop because now would be taken for free and uh, after rook takes on c5 bishop on c2 getting away from this way uh, g6 and um, two pawns extra so it's also winning for van forest uh, definitely the way to go uh, however he just takes on on g4 so that's a little trap um, set up by a very experienced uh, nikita vitugov and now white get the tempo to play rook takes on c five we have b takes on c5 and now we have b6 so like all these variations i show you before a takes on b6 a takes on b6 and now rook a8 doesn't work rook a8 is drawing the game so what a wonderful trap and van forest has to be very careful here actually uh, he had the easy win and now he has to you know uh, really think very deeply rook a8 a a a if he would play b7 would come rook d8 but then bishop c7 attacking the rook and rook can't do anything if rook goes to f8 then bishop go to d6 again so rook d8 same story bishop c7 maybe rook e8 also not bishop a4 so rook f8 and we have the same so this is draw and this rook can't be moved uh, anywhere else cannot be sacrificed also uh because the, this um this pawn is gonna promote so that would be pff, that would be disaster for for jordan but he found the way rook c6 and that's um, the best move of course uh, and here in this position um, bishop on c7 was played rook b6 so um, the the rook has to be sacrificed sadly uh, but that's the only way and bishop takes on b6 c4 played by vitugov so now let's see what's going on the board we have bishop d1 and here h5 is possible to play but actually um, one of the pawns gonna fall anyway so uh, van forest preferred to play bishop on g6 as more active move and also protect the way for this pawn to uh, approach uh, so we have bishop on g4 and bishop f5 countering bishop f3 and now we have c3 so uh, Pass pawn, of course, uh, must to be pushed. We have king g1, king f7, and now we have bishop on d4. So uh, taking away the spot from the uh, from the king, but also attacking the important pawn. So we have c2, bishop on b2. So now uh, dark square bishop has to you know keep an eye on the c1 square and now we have d4 so the helper is coming king f2 we have e5 
so all the pawns are pushed and now we have bishop on d5 check king f6 h4 taking away the space from from the king but king can approach on g6 first king g3 and actually uh if black managed to take that pawn that would be you know game over uh, but also if the king uh, white king has to stay around here then who can take care of these pawns this pawn's gonna be pushed so very uncomfortable let's say and uh, that's a losing situation but vitugov um, try to you know create some some chances bishop on d3 uh, we have bishop on c1 it's more like um, waiting move we have e4 um, definitely you know um, approaching more and more we have bishop on b2 attacking this pawn but it doesn't really matter because uh, promotion is coming we have king f5 bishop g8 attacking the pawn so h6 we have bishop c1 still waiting moves we have e3 so uh, all this doesn't make much sense but uh, bishop b2 so uh, vitugov still trying to you know play and see how it's gonna end uh, and now we have bishop on e4 bishop on e4 actually creates some wall for for the white king uh, now we have bishop on c1 so still waiting and g5 trying to just exchange the pawns h5 was played so um vitugov i don't know try to create another the last chance last chance pass pawn but now we have g4 so it can be taken uh, very easily uh vitugov don't let to, to that happen so we have a bishop on h7 check so that move of course can't be done king e5 instead we have bishop on g8 uh, vitugov don't want to exchange the bishops and now we have e2 king f2 trying to uh you know be on time uh, with the king but now we have d3 and in this position actually um, Nikita Vitugov um, resigned the game and there is totally nothing uh, he can do he just uh, play I don't know maybe um, just by courtoisy or, or, or something but uh, really nothing can be done even he can try to take on h6 but now g3 check uh, of course it can't be taken because of promotion so king on um, e2 uh, g2 would be played and uh, yeah bishop g7 maybe couple of checks uh, king f4 uh, bishop h6 king f3 king d2 if you want to avoid the the, the check but uh, it doesn't really matter uh, even if trying to escape then that would be very nice promotion on e1 and now where are you going king so king has to go back and now g1 check and then c1 checkmate so uh, that's funny ending so probably vitugov didn't want to see this uh he just resigned resign after move d3 but jordan van forest so congratulations to jordan really great tournament for him um he gonna you know win a lot of points in ranking he gonna definitely be in top 100 chess players in the world uh, after that tournament so i'm really really uh, surprised and i'm really excited uh, on every game he play so there is nothing more to say uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one